All right, for this example, we're given this initial value problem, 3 times dy dx equals x squared minus xy cubed, with the initial condition y of 1 equals 6. And we're, we're asked to determine whether our theorem, theorem 1, um, implies a unique solution to this problem. And remember that the that, that theorem that we called theorem 1 said this, that if we've got a, an initial value problem in the form dy dx equals some function f of xy, um, and uh, y of x naught is equal to y naught, then we're going to have a unique solution over some interval around x if um, if f of x, y and uh, the partial derivative of f with respect to y are continuous um, in some rectangle uh, containing containing ing, uh, the point x naught y naught. So that's our that's our theorem that if if both this uh, this function f of x y and the partial derivative of that function with respect to y are continuous over some rectangle that we can draw around this point uh, x y x not y not then uh, we're going to say that a unique solution exists for some interval all right um, so let's Let's apply that to this initial value problem. So we've got, let's first put this in, in terms of dy dx. So dy dx is going to be equal to one third times x squared minus x y cubed. <clears throat> and uh, so our function f of x y is this, one third x squared minus x, y cubed. And then um, the derivative, the partial derivative of this function with respect to y, uh, well, x is going to be constant, so that's a zero. This one, we're going to bring down the three, but then we're going to multiply by that one third. Um, so this is going to be negative x, y squared. All right, so here's our, here's our function. Here's the partial derivative of that function with respect to the dependent variable. And we can see that um, if we've got some rectangle containing the point 1, 6, um, if we, can we draw some rectangle where both of these would be continuous through that, um, through that rectangle? Well, yeah, both of these are going to be continuous everywhere. So, of course, we can draw a rectangle around that point. Um, so, the answer to this is yes. Um, yes, this implies a unique solution. All right, now let's, let's look at the, our other example. Which was uh, dy dx. equals uh, 3y to the 2 thirds and y of 2 equals 0. All right, so our function f of xy is 3y to the 2 thirds. And the partial derivative of that function with respect to y is then going to be, if we bring that 2 thirds down, that's 2 uh, y to the negative one third. All right. So um, now the question is, can we 
Can we draw some rectangle around the point 2, 0? Can we draw some rectangle here where both of these are going to um, are both going to be continuous uh, throughout this this rectangle? Well, here we can see that if uh, if y is zero, this is not going to exist because this is two over y, the cube root of y. Um, if y is zero, then then we've got a problem here. We're dividing by y, so it's not going to be continuous at y equals zero. So there's no way that we can draw a rectangle around that point where uh, this is going to be continuous because obviously it's not continuous right at, it doesn't exist uh, when, when y is equal to zero. Um, so, so our answer here is going to be no. No, this, um, our theorem, theorem one, does not imply a unique solution to this problem. Now, uh, it's important to note that that doesn't mean that there's not a unique solution. Um, it, uh, it, it just means that, that our theorem can't be used to imply that. Um, as it turns out, the, uh, this initial value problem has more than one solution. Um, but, uh, but we can't tell that. We can't really tell anything from this theorem if, if both of these conditions aren't satisfied. Um, one more thing I wanted to note about this is that if this were uh, y of 2 equals 1, say, now um, we could draw a point, we could draw a rectangle around this point uh, to 1 where these would be continuous just as long as we didn't get down to the x-axis. So that would imply um, a unique solution over some interval. Um, just as just so long as we don't have that that point y equals zero. Um, all right, so hopefully that gives you some idea of what we mean uh, by whether or not this theorem implies a unique solution.